All tracks have fallen into disrepair since the railway station in the northern French town of Longo went out of service years ago. The railway workers, who were once outspoken communists, are also quiet these days. The only one still manning the barricades is communist mayor Colette Funé. She's trying to get the railway workers' residential estate back into shape. These are typical rail worker houses. This is our soul, the history of Longo. Pascal Caron still works for the National Railway. His house is scheduled to be torn down. But thanks to Colette Finet, he's been able to remain. I don't want to leave. My friends are here, current and former railway workers. I was born here. My father was a railway worker, and I love this world. The mayor even managed to have the estate designated a listed site. 100 kilometers further south in Paris, the Communist Party headquarters is also a local landmark. It was designed by Paul Shemitov and Brazil's star architect Oscar Niemeyer in the 1970s. Back then, the avant-garde building was considered cutting-edge in design. At the time, the communists were at the height of their power. That's why they built the most modern building in all of Paris. Paul Shemitov was also a communist in the 1970s, but he was never a hardliner. Some of his own family had been deported by Stalin in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was an authoritarian and repressive police state. Everyone was forced to put on a show of enthusiasm. But this bureaucracy led to the downfall of the Soviet Union. Before the collapse of the Soviet Union, many French communists were apologists for the Stalin regime. French historian Stéphane Courtois still has one of the old posters commemorating Stalin. At the time, many French party members remained loyal to the Stalin cult. Most French communists weren't aware of the full extent of Stalin's atrocities until the fall of the Soviet Union, when the doors to Moscow's archives finally opened. Stéphane Courtois wrote his best-selling Black Book of Communism several years after the collapse. These are the foreign editions of the Black Book. There are so many, I don't know what to do with them. Recently it was translated into Japanese and Georgian. The book was important to all on the left. It was no longer possible to ignore the criminal nature of the regime. The book helped bring about the definitive downfall of communist ideology. But Maya Colette Finet remains committed. She says the Soviet Union never instituted true communism. She still keeps the dream of the victory of the proletariat alive. The traditional marionette she was given when she took office is still on display. He always has his foot raised and is ready to stomp on any injustice. She still believes in the superiority of a planned economy and feels vindicated by the recent global economic crisis. The crisis is the fault of capitalism in European countries. The market has become too important. Paul Shemitov also believes capitalism is in decline and will eventually fade like communism. It's now time for something entirely new. A French communist once said, communism is just an archaic name for a project that will be called something entirely different one day. Two decades after the Soviet collapse, French communists are still on the search for a new ideological home.